man was a bread stasher all his life. He never got fat. He wound up with a used car, a 17-inch screen, and arthritis. Tamari is a drag man. Tamari is a king-size fuck. Beating, beating, they can I just can't stand rock and roll. Oh, and my sweet talking mama says, Come on, daddy, oh, let's go. No, no, I don't want to rock and roll. I don't want to want to rock and roll. I'd rather stay in my pad and be your bongo beating daddy, oh. with her. I bought a dog to kill the calf that ate the canary. What is true? Well, babe, you can't drag me off of this seat. I don't wanna, wanna move on my feet. Your daddy will can't go, cause baby, you know that I'm a beat neck. We cough blood on this earth, now there's a race for space. We can cough blood on the moon soon. Tamara is Dragsville cats. Tamara is a king size drag. It was a world that was hostile, basically, to what it was we wanted to do. If you wanted to breathe and turn your head to the right, someone would say you can't turn your head to the right. It's only allowed to turn your head to the left. If you can't turn your head to the left, you got to look up or whatever. It is the 1950s. World War II is over, and servicemen have returned back home to the United States and settled down. American veterans are flocking to the suburbs, and an unprecedented population boom is occurring, providing an even larger consumer base for the market economy. America is becoming increasingly affluent, with an automobile and television set becoming the standard for every middle-class family. More than ever before, Americans are socially and financially comfortable. Despite the overwhelming sense of contentment most felt, some were bothered by the lack of diversity and creativity in society. Some Americans, mostly in their 20s, saw the uniformity and materialism of the 1950s as vices that were being hidden by the emerging television and media industry. These same Americans also detested the racism of the time and encouraged the growing African American culture. Beatniks, as they were known to most Americans, were part of a subculture that blossomed out of a literary movement. The seeds of this movement were planted in Greenwich, New York City by three young bohemians, Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, and William Burroughs. Kerouac, who was in a way the father of the movement, moved to New York City when he was 17 years old. At this young age, Kerouac was introduced to jazz and the underground culture that thrived in New York. He eventually went on to play college football for Columbia University, but dropped out a year later after breaking his leg and losing his spot on the team. He spent the next few years performing odd jobs and eventually wound up enlisting in the Marines in 1943, but was honorably discharged after 10 days of service for strong schizoid trends. He then returned to where he felt most comfortable, Greenwich Village, New York City. Here, he started his friendship with fellow college dropout William Burroughs and Allen Ginsberg. Ginsberg, who was studying at Columbia at the time, grew up in an extremely liberal family where his mother often supported the ideas of communism and tried to instill some of its ideals on him. He grew up to idolize alcohol, drugs, and sex, something that would have an immense impact on the movement that was soon to be created. Together, these three would foster a new vision that focused on self-expression, art, jazz, 
and substances. The literary movement itself reached the height of its popularity with the publishing of Kerouac's book, On the Road, which described his three-week road trip filled with parties. Another piece of literature that gained popularity was Ginsberg's poem, Howl, which recounted crime, his friends, heroin, and his sexual exploits. This was extremely controversial for the time and gave more publicity to the up-and-coming movement. The ideas and cultures these men produced with ideas like this new vision would eventually create a home for other nonconformists searching for like minds. The Beatniks, also known as the Beat Generation or the Beat Movement, were repelled by the media-centric, cookie-cutter, suburban conformity of average American life. They viewed traditional America as fake and superficial and emphasized the need to live life authentically and to the fullest, avoiding traditional responsibilities, traveling, and experimenting with new drugs. They wanted to go against the conservative view of their parents' generation that some social behaviors were hidden and silenced in public. They wanted to have conversations about sexuality, about anti-establishment feelings, and they wanted to create provocative art. No longer would they be held down by the social norms of the past. The Beatniks formed as a subculture because of their feelings towards the values they observed in mainstream American society. The Beatniks were nonconformists whose cause really had no organization or leadership. They opposed the materialism of American culture, and because of it, they lived a very non-materialistic lifestyle. Their homes, which were very sparsely furnished, were called pads because of the mattresses they used to cover the floors. Beatniks also celebrated the teenage rebellion that contrasted with the values of conformity of mainstream society. Beatniks were also very open with their emotions and did not have any desire to fit in, nor did they respect authority, all of these being in stark contrast with the values promoted by mainstream society. Beatniks were also very sexual in their art, literature, and in their lifestyle. Howell, a poem by beat writer Allen Ginsberg, was considered a revolution in poetry for its focus on sexuality. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn looking for an angry fix, angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient heavenly connection to the starry dynamo in the machinery of night. Jazz music was also a major influence on beat art. Many beatnik poets took the rhythm from jazz songs and incorporated it into their poetry. They also used many of the same slang words that were used in jazz culture. The beatnik values were almost the complete opposite of the values that were promoted by the majority of Americans. The culture of the beat generation proved itself to be a major threat to the growing conformist society of America in the 1950s. With the Cold War still at large and fear of communism on the rise, most Americans were reluctant to dissent from the cultural and political norms set for fear of being labeled disloyal or worse, communist. The lack of conformity and distrust of the establishment, the United States government, struck up by the Beats, caused unease in the average conformist American population. The name Beatniks was finally coined in 1958 by Herb Kane, a writer for the San Francisco Chronicle, after Soviet spacecraft Sputnik 1, as a reference to the Beat Generation's so-called communist tendencies, preying on the fear of the American. In addition to the fear of dissent, which was often confused with disloyalty in regard to the Beat Generation, was the lack of understanding of the Beat lifestyle. The Beats were famous for their use of drugs, mainly marijuana in addition to amphetamines and their reckless actions like those depicted in Kerouac's On the Road. The Beats were viewed fearfully because they, in many people's eyes, were destroying the traditional family lifestyle, stirring up unruliness in teenagers and young adults, and undermining the career-driven American culture. Their love for jazz music, music viewed to be majorly exclusive to the African-American population, proved itself to provoke fears from the American public because they supported equality and rights for African-Americans fueling the fire for the rising civil rights movement. The Beats dressed differently than the average American, adding to their anti-conformist way of life, causing Americans to distrust and fear the movement 
not liking what they didn't understand. Though the beat movement began to fade out by the mid-1960s, it still held influence in the political and cultural movements of the decade. It began the breakdown of some of the traditional American ideals. Teenagers were extremely influenced by beatnik literature, such as Kerouac's On the Road, encouraging a development of a youth culture and generation gap. Beatniks pushed people to feel less tied down to the expectations of suburban America, and women were more and more commonly being seen outside of the home and inside the working world. The use of drugs and anti-establishment attitude of the Beats gave rise to the hippie movement or counterculture, and also led to a lack of support for the government at the rise of the Vietnam War. The hippie movement would eventually grow to become more politically successful and more popular than the Beat generation. The Beats paved the way for this counterculture by going against the mainstream thoughts and beliefs of the time and behaving in ways previously thought of as taboo. The free-thinking precedent set by the Beat generation carved a place in America for people to question the wrongdoings of society. They cried, put down pot, don't think a lot. For what? Time, how much, and what to do with it? Sleep, man, and you might wake up digging the whole human race, giving itself three days to get out. Tomorrow is a drag cop, the future is a flake. John Henry was working on the railroad. His hammer was striking fire And the mountain was so tall John and was so small Lord, he laid down his hammer Lord, he died, yeah, yeah He laid down his hammer and he died <laughs> Now some say he's from Texas And some say he's from France But I know He's just a Louisiana boy who died with a hammer in his hand, Lord, no. He died with a hammer in his hand. Yeah, blues man. A fast short, swing with a gassy chick, turn on to a thousand joys. Smile on what happened or check what's going to happen. You'll miss what's happening. Turn your eyes inside and dig the vacuum. Tomorrow, drag.